Hello everyone, it's the 4th of December, perfect time for an early summer garden tour. Just wanted to let you know that we proudly can produce about 95% of our fruit and veggie needs now. We grow a wide variety of plants and even though you might look at it and say, wow, that's so much food, it's only just enough to feed the two of us. So we'll talk more about that as we go on our tour. So let's start today with the macadamia. Now if you saw our spring garden tour you would have seen it beautiful and in full flower. And look at how much nuts it's set. It's just done really well this year. This tree actually produces really large nuts and so uh, we're looking forward to a very good harvest from it this year. It's a dwarf macadamia and it hasn't really produced a lot because it's got a lot of competition here with other plants. So this is the first year that it's going to be bulk nuts. Yeah, what, the, what do they call that? A bumper harvest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so since we're talking about macadamias, we can talk about protein. Okay, one of the hardest things to grow in your garden is your to, plants to meet your protein needs. And so um, we're going to start really focusing on that from now on. And we've added a few things to the garden that um, we're going to be trialling and seeing if we can actually produce more of our protein needs. We're vegetarians, so uh, we're going to try and get a lot more protein from plants, um, even though we still eat, of course, eggs and milk. So let's move on up this slope now. So how many macadamia trees do we have? Well, we've actually got, wow, altogether about 10. Exactly four, 10. Yeah, four, <laughs> four in the backyard that are actually um, producing really well. And we'll have a look at them when we get out there. Um, some other younger ones in the backyard and then this one in the front yard. So we've got five producing quite well and five coming on. That's right. Okay, so this is a new addition. This is a... Saba nut or Malabar chestnut and uh, it's a tropical plant and it produces um, a hard seed case about that big with uh, nuts inside that taste a little bit like uh, peanuts maybe but anyway um, the they taste exactly like Saba nuts <laughs> they do <laughs> um, the good thing about this is that um, hopefully um, it won't be able to be attacked very much by the birds. So, and you can see it's surrounded by deer-proof fencing because we do have a problem with deers. <laughs> <laughs> with feral deer, yeah, that's right. Okay, over here, another new addition. Uh, this is a moringa tree, sometimes known as a drumstick tea. Um, it's uh, very popular in Asia and Africa. And um, the reason we decided to grow one in the garden is because the leaves are like amazingly nutritious and they have um, a complete protein profile. So they'll be leafy greens that are actually also meeting our protein needs. Okay. What else we got out of the front here? Okay. Uh, a couple of citrus trees in pots. These are dwarf citrus trees, a lemon and a lime. Yay! And then over here, we have some pineapples. Yay, little pineapples. Yeah, these are the uh, low acid uh, sun gold pineapples. And when they're finished, the pineapple, this was mainly our pineapple garden. The pineapples will be moving out the back. We've got some more growing out there at the moment. And we decided to move all the pineapples out the back because we found out that this garden bed uh, is actually fabulous for celery. Now, celery... Um, is a little bit difficult to grow because it needs a lot of water and it needs to be well drained and not too much sun not yeah sun but not the sun sort of drying everything out and so we've tried it in a few different places and just by coincidence uh, some seed ended up in this bed and the celery has loved it here so this will be being uh, become the celery bed in future and you can see this one here is actually going to seed Looks a bit like a trifid at the moment. We've let it, letting this go to seed and then I'll harvest seed and then we'll have plenty of seed for uh, after we've moved the pineapples and we uh, transform this into the celery bed. All right. Okay, so here we've got some little tiny baby uh, cucumbers, our lovely uh, 
red and long, long white cucumbers that we really enjoy. Some of them are doing well, some not so well, but they'll get there. Next, pepinos. They're lovely fruit. They're, They're a grown. type of melon. With, with, see how they go. They usually get quite badly bitten by fruit fly, but... We're going to use fruit fly exclusion bags and more about that later, but they should do well here. Tomatoes. Yeah, not sure what type those are. Not <laughs> sure <laughs> either. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> okay. And some lettuce. Yep, protected from the bower birds. Yep. And here is some new things that we're doing. Okay, so these are tongue of fire bolotti beans. And we'll be eating them as a fresh bean. Yep. So instead of waiting um, and then drying them, we'll actually wait till they mature into large beans and then um, eat the beans fresh. And then we're also growing peanuts, which are doing really, really well here. And so they're flowering nicely and they'll be starting to um, put their pegs down and set their peanuts under the ground. This will be another attempt to get a bit more protein in our diet, yep. our beans and our peanuts. So this is sort of a protein bed, really. At the moment, yeah. <laughs> oh, another bean. Yeah, okay, so this is a lima bean, a bush lima bean, and this is the large, um, hopefully large lima beans that uh, they grow a lot of in the uh, United States of America. Yeah, so, they like them over there. Yeah, not, not so, so popular, popular in here. Australia, but we're gonna test them out. Yeah, oh, hang on, we've missed some, we've missed some. Oh yeah, here you are. okay, so uh, pumpkins. Butternuts. Butternut pumpkins. Uh, Kumara. Sweet which potato. Is a type, type of sweet potato. Orange sweet potato. <laughs> it's an orange sweet potato, that one. Yep. And these are, although they look like corn, they're not. They're actually um, a variety of sorghum that is really good um, for making syrup or juicing and making a beautiful sweet juice. We love this one. In Yummy. Place. Okay. Next one down. Over here. So we're going down to this one. Oh, you want to go right down here? Sure. Okay. So this is uh, sugar cane, a purple um, variety of sugar cane. And uh, we're hoping to actually get that going really well. And juice it. And juice it. And come around, I'll come around this side so we can see. Uh, this is buckwheat. And we've got some more of this out the back, so we'll have another look at that out there. So we're hoping to grow that as, and grind it up to make it grow. And there's our sweet corn patch, which we've been eating lots of. Yep, that's been really delicious. And these are carrots, freshly planted carrots coming up. And some blue lake beans that are... Uh, Seem to be going lost, again. Yeah, they're having a second, <laughs> second go. We there left is. them in and they're... They're producing again, so that's excellent. The blue lakes are lovely. Here's some more blue lakes that are just starting to climb up their pole. We find this the best way of growing beans. Just put a single metal pole in and plant, five, you know, about 10 plants around it. and Just let them go for it. Yep, and you can plant like every two weeks. And uh, great. Really well. okay, so more tomatoes. More tomatoes. And we've got a lot of fungus coming up in our garden. A lot of... To toadstools, mm. mushrooms. Yeah. What are they? Uh, they're, this is Vazella or Salon spinach, and it's a really nice leafy green that um, you have in the hottest weather um, when you know you, maybe lettuce and things like that won't grow very well. And uh, it's a nice, um, healthy. Uh, it actually can be eaten fresh or cooked, and um, it's very nice tasting. And we've got some sage here. Yeah, some sage. Just We're filling up some lots spots. Lots more herbs in the little nooks and crannies in the garden. If you can see in between the pavers there, we've got chives. And there's some comfrey. Yes, yeah, so we'll be doing a video on uh, how to make a comfrey cream. Yeah. And um, in this section here, you can see this is a sunflower. Okay, there's a few of those in there. And then this is a pelted sapo or toad skin melon okay sometimes also called a christmas melon and uh, they're just starting to flower now they're um, a, a lovely melon um, with a yellow flesh and a nice flavor 
but the thing that's great about them is they're a really good keeper they're the best keeping melons um, that's why they called them Christmas melons because you could harvest them in July and keep them to Christmas um, in the northern hemisphere of course <laughs> uh, okay so moving along they're called toad melons because they've got ugly crinkly toad skin toad skin melons yeah okay this is um, French tarragon, French tarragon some more sage and I put some parsnips in here and they've just yeah. starting to come up now. Yeah, we didn't get much of a success No, with that, we'll have we? to probably put some more in and see how we go. And we've got okay. some tomatoes here. We'll have a look at them from the other side. Yeah. Or maybe I'll sneak around. Yeah, go around pop in and have a look. Okay, so because it was so hot in um, August and July, the uh, fruit fly came out really early and so we had to get these nets on these plants really quickly. And uh, these are Campbell 33s, an heirloom variety of tomato that grows lovely, big, juicy, delicious tomatoes. Campbell soup used to use them for their soup. Yeah. Okay, you can see um, there's more chives growing here. And these are brown beauty bush beans. And uh, they've done really well. We've just planted them in and around the other cages and things, and, and they're really nice tasting beans. Any spare spots, we've put them in. And they've got some capsicums here. Yep, the long... Long horn ones. Yeah, long horn capsicums. You can see one in the bag over here. Come yeah, well this is, our, this is our fruit fly. Exclusion bags. Yep. yep. Oh, 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 did you oh, make it? Yep. <laughs> and you can see, um, if you duck in there, you can see there's a whole lot of um, fruit on those. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Yum -o. And then we've still got some spring onions in there. They're going really well. And then, of course, these really nicely growing rosellas. Okay, so... And we'll be making tea out of them. Yeah. I think we can eat them too, can't we? Yeah, you can. Um, you can eat the, the new leaves. I haven't done that yet. I've been letting them grow. But we will try that and see. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's any... Um... Oh, yeah. Okay, here's one. So this is a... Um... The flower just starting to form, and it's actually this reddish part um, that you eat later on, or you can dry for tea. Hmm. Okay, I think they call it the calyx, the fleshy calyx. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so you can see if you look back that way, you can see that we've let some lettuce grow to seed here. That'll be good to be collecting seed from that. And there's some more peanuts over there as well. But anyway, just getting to this garden now, um, there's a whole lot of beans. I think they're the brown booty bush beans, aren't yep. they? Yeah, yep. planted along the edge there. And uh, we've um, marked out some spots. You can see with these yellow markers. And we're hoping to plant some more moringa trees in this bed. Yeah, hopefully three or four. Probably expand to five. Yep, just depending on how they go, how yeah. much space they need. Okay. So here's another addition, another new addition to the garden, and this is a dwarf red dacca banana. We've put three along this bottom bed, and uh, we're going to be growing these because uh, they only grow to about two metres, and so they'll be much easier to handle than the uh, Cavendish bananas that we've got growing in the backyard. Yeah, Cavendish bananas grow to five metres and can get a bit tall. Yeah, so we've got popcorn growing between these bananas just to Keep the use dirt cool. There, yeah, to use up the uh, space while we're waiting. That's the most important thing about uh, um, making sure that you've got a constant supply of food is to be using all the space in your garden as much as you can. Okay, we should go around the back now. Yeah, let's go.